OK. So I guess we can start. So my name is Ricardo. I work for um, the OpenStack team at CERN. Uh, today I'll be describing a bit uh, the work we've done to integrate Neutron at CERN and how we mi migrated from Nova Network. Uh, we are a big team, so I'm just representing a lot of people here. So a bit of about uh, what CERN is. Tim gave, gave a, a good description today in the keynote. Uh, so CERN is the European Re Organization for Nuclear Research. It uh, was founded in 1954, has 20 member states, 22 member states, and uh, many other uh, collaborate with the different experiments running at CERN and uh, the services that we, we provide. Uh, our mission is to provide fundamental research in the area of uh, high energy physics, mostly. Uh, description of what we do. So right now, the main machine we have is called the Large Hadron Collider. It's this, this one here on the left, on the bottom. Um, it's a particle accelerator uh, that is um, in a tunnel, a circular accelerator in a tunnel 100 meters um, underneath. And uh, it's located between the Jura Mountains and uh, Lake Geneva close to the French Northern Alps, and it spans two countries. So part of it is in Switzerland, part of it is in France. And then uh, we accelerate protons in, uh, inside the accelerator with, with two beams of protons, and from time to time we make them collide in specific places uh, so that we have uh, protocol collision is happening close to these detectors. The, the detectors look a bit like this, but this is a very old picture. Now the, it's a cavern of uh, 60 meters high, and it's full. Uh, this was a long time ago during the construction. Uh, and you can see the scale of it by the small man on the bottom. Um, so this is where the collisions happen. And uh, with these collisions, what we try is to detect new particles, new physics. And uh, for this, we, we track uh, energies. So the detector is made of several layers of hardware and electronics, and from this we, we manage to get a lot of data out. Uh, there's a, uh, inside the detector, there's something like a petabyte per second being um, generated. Of course, we cannot store any of all of this, and we very quickly take out most of, the, or most of it out, and we only store what we think will be relevant later. Well, we still get uh, something like two and a half gigabytes a second going to the data center, to the, our data centers. So at CERN, we are currently running two data centers, one in Geneva and one in uh, close to Budapest in Wigner uh, in Hungary. So it's an extension of our uh, main data center. And we have very fast network links between the two, so it kind of feels like the same, although you can feel a bit the latency. It's not that far, but still. Uh, we currently have around uh, 190,000 cores, uh, 17,000 uh, physical boxes, around 170 petabytes of raw disk. This is not all used for storage. It's also a lot of the disk running in the compute nodes, and around 200 petabytes on tape. The reason for this is that all the data we collect is stored uh, on tape for archival and the later analysis if needed. So OpenStack at CERN, it's been in production since July 2013. Again, 190,000 cores today. Uh, in total, we've had around 4 million VMs created since the start, uh, at the rate of 300 VMs being created and deleted every hour. A lot of people have workloads where they, they constantly trigger uh, new VMs. And then uh, this is one dashboard we have where you can see the usage of the project. So two, almost 3,000 different projects in, in, the, in our cloud. Two and a half thousand users, 22,000 VMs running, and then we use Nova Cells, and I will talk a lot about this part, and um, 7,000, a bit more hypervisors, uh, almost 3,000 volumes, uh, storing around one petabyte of data in Cinder. We use Ceph as a backend, and uh, recently we added Magnum as a, uh, another service in, in OpenStack. We have around 20 clusters deployed, and it's still in pilot, but almost moving to production. And we'll be adding Manila also soon. So briefly, I won't go into the details of the wall architecture, as we'll focus on Neutron. But there are some things that we do to scale uh, that are important. So we run dedicated controllers per service. 
Um, we, in many cases, we have to split the RabbitMQ instances, so we don't have a big Rabbit instance clustered or non-clustered. We have, uh, in some cases, separate ones for each of the services. We had Nova Network, which was the option at the start, and uh, there were a lot of patches being done to integrate with the uh, CERN networking. Uh, it's an heterogeneous environment in the sense that we have two different hypervisors, so most of the workloads go to KVM, but we also have provide Hyper-V, and uh, the Windows boxes uh, mostly go to Hyper-V, although now we started deploying them also on top of KVM. Um, for Cinder, we have two different Ceph instances, one in um, Geneva and one in Wigner, mostly because of latency. Uh, Keystone is fully integrated with the rest of the CERN account and lifecycle of uh, projects and users. So when a new user comes to CERN, he gets an account also in OpenStack. The same is, tr is true when they leave. Their, their OpenStack resources are uh, removed. All the infrastructure is deployed using Puppet, mostly using the upstream Puppet OpenStack modules with a few changes locally. And the main thing is that we use uh, Nova, Nova cells to be able to scale. And as we discovered, not only to scale, but also to be more flexible, to be able to test new features without affecting the whole infrastructure. So that's uh, where I will start. So describing a bit our uh, Nova cells architecture. Uh, in Nova cells, you have a top cell which receives all the API requests. And then you kind of partition your infrastructure into child cells. This is good because it puts less load on the scheduler and all the Nova services, but it's also good because, for example, if we would tomorrow we would like to introduce GPUs, we could de dedicate one area and just enable GPUs. And also, as I will describe today, when we wanted to add um, Neutron, we could deploy uh, Neutron as a service on the world cloud, but only enabled on one of the cells, which meant we could sc scale gradually and learn a bit about the service with production workloads before uh, just opening it uh, globally. So in the top cell, we run the Nova cells which communicate with the child ones and the Nova API, and then each individual cells runs the Nova controller. And there you have the conductor, schedule, uh, scheduler. In, from the start, we had Nova network, and again, Nova cells to communicate with the parent top cell. And then for each individual cells, there's a large set of hypervisors that are served there. And there we run Nova Compute. So this is basically how we structure our infrastructures to be able to scale uh, horizontally. We started with a couple of cells. Uh, with time, we've been making them smaller, more manageable, and learning a bit about them. And we ended up having more and more. So right now we have 44. Uh, every time we, we get a bunch of new hardware, we kind of put it in a new, a new cell. In some cases, we also replace all the hardware being retired. The CERN networking, um, so there's some, this, this is really relevant because it's why uh, all the, most of this talk will be about this. Uh, in, at CERN, every device, every connected device has an entry in a network database, which is managed by another group. Um, so we provide IPv4 and IPv6 connectivity. Most of the devices have public IP addresses. This is uh, something that is uh, specific because we, we have enough. And then uh, one very important bit is that we do isolation via IP services. So to kind of protect the infrastructure from misbehaving bits of the, of, uh, the network, uh, we decided to segment the, the network in, in what we call clusters or IP services. So the, in, in summary, these are just different broadcast domains. Then how did we do uh, the integration with OpenStack? So this is not the traditional uh, uh, OpenStack network deployment. Um, so IP services are broadcast domains. What we needed is kind of a new uh, notion in Neutron, which would provide the segmentation of the layer two um, we, we, if, we, if we look at it, the primary IP services are um, where all the hypervisors will get an IP. But to kind of describe the problem, if we would schedule a VM, and the VM will also get an IP and be registered in the network database, but that IP would be in a different service than the hypervisor, then it would never get connectivity. So we have to make sure that when we schedule a VM to a specific hypervisor, it ends up in the same IP service so that it can have connectivity to the outside and the inside. So that means that we, we broke the IP services into primary ones where hypervisors get IPs and secondary ones 
where uh, the VMs get IPs, and each secondary has to be belong to one single primary. It also means that if we need to extend the infrastructure, we can easily do this by just adding more secondary IPs. These are just subnets to an existing primary IP service. Um, so the mapping, uh, initially we, we had a mapping which was not tied to the cell. Uh, with time we learned that this simplifies a lot the management. So what we've been doing is when we create a new cell, we dedicate a primary IP service to it. Um, and that means that also uh, the number of nodes in that cell will be limited, but that's also good for, uh, for manageability. So Nova Network was there from the start. Uh, again, uh, if in most deployments, I, I guess Neutron won't, won't be configured like this. For us, we have a flat network, so we don't do VLANs, uh, VXLANs, or Jerry tunnels. We just do flat. Uh, so we don't have um, t tenant networks, and we do provide a network. So all the infrastructure is what we build in, and we don't do overlays on top. Some patches that we had to do. So obviously, we have this network database where all the devices have to be integrated. That means we have to hook something into Neutron. So from, from the start with Nova Network, what we did was that every time we would get a new uh, IP service assigned to OpenStack, we would just register all the entries of that sub, subnet range in the, in the network database and uh, with fake names. And then when we actually scheduled uh, VM uh, with that IP, we would just rename by querying Nova and filling up the actual information there. Now, this all worked, and uh, we were kind of happy with it, although we could do something fancier, but it worked. But Nova Network was being phased out, so we started looking into Neutron, what we, how we could migrate, and also uh, thinking that we maybe can provide uh, new services by deploying Neutron. The initial goal was just to start with the exact setup we had for Nova Network. So again, flat net networks and uh, provider networks. So that, this means no virtual routers, no floating IPs, no firewalls, no load balances. So very basic uh, OpenStack networking setup. But we wanted to make it better in the sense that instead of pre-registering all the subnet range in the network database, we would just register a new device as it was created. So when a VM gets created, we add a new device to, to the network database. By moving to Neutron, we would also like to simplify upgrades. A lot of the code that was specific to CERN was patches in Nova Network, and it was making it hard to, to upgrade from one version to the other. It's doable, but um, it's kind of harder than it should be. So a timeline of how we did this. Uh, we did a lot of different uh, trials in the implementation of how this could be done in Neutron. Uh, we started doing some small test beds around the uh, end of last year, October last year. We deployed, deployed Neutron. Uh, we added the first Neutron cell immediately after. So the Neutron runs not partitioned like Nova with cells or something similar, but as a normal OpenStack service. So all, uh, there's only one single entry point for Neutron. Then we deployed the cell. We configured Nova to use Neutron that one while keeping Nova network in all the others. So we kind of mix environment, but it all works. Then uh, this was still requiring a couple of small patches in Neutron, and I'll give details later. But uh, around the same time in the Tokyo Summit, there was a very good talk about moving uh, these plugin codes out of tree from Neutron. And this is what we did a very, uh, a very short time after. And around May, we had the first production cell. And since then, we got uh, very confident with the service. We enabled it by default for all the new cells from June this year. And now we've started migrating the old cells to use Neutron 2. So I'll give some details of, on the Neutron plugin implementation. So this is an overview of uh, how the Neutron code and how you can plug it, things in, how the compon components work. It's not the Neutron deployment, which is a bit more complicated diagram. But this one is uh, Neutron has a set of core APIs. And all the rest are extensions. Even things that a lot of people use are, are still extensions. So it means that it's actually quite easy to add new things to Neutron. And then there's plugins which implement these APIs. There's the core plugins. And then there's individual plugins for each of the extensions. And then 
There are the agents that run in the boxes that use the code from a, a specific plugin. You can configure which one you want to use. And you can even use more than one. So taking this and moving to CERN, uh, what we did is that we realized we needed two things. The first one was our own plugin to do the interaction with the, the network database. So when a port is created, we need to register it, things like this. But we also need uh, extensions, because uh, the functionality provided by Neutron at the time doesn't provide the segmentation of the L2 networks. So we had to kind of create this notion ourselves. So that's, that's what we did uh, it's here in this. So the first part was by writing a custom driver to an existing plugin. So in, in the ML2 plugin, you can actually hook your own driver for some, some of the functionality. Uh, then IP services and clusters, we added an extension called the subnet cluster extension. We call it like this at the time. Uh, IP restrictions is uh, when you create a VM, which IP should I get? There are some restrictions we have to apply so that the VM ends up in a hypervisor that provides connectivity to it. This is the one we added here. And then for metadata, and I'll talk a bit more about this, we use this magic IP redirection in Nova. Um, I'll give details. Uh, the first deployment required patches, then we converted to the out of three plugin. I really recommend that you watch this talk. It's very well uh, done and it's very entertaining. Uh, so this was writing a plugin for Neutron and he called it uh, human defined networking where every time a packet was sent, there would be an email to a person that would reply to the email and things like this. So it's very entertaining, but very clear how we could do it. And then you can check the code for our plugin. So if you want to do something similar, it can be a good start to, to, to go from. So giving details. So this driver, the CERN mechanism driver is this driver we hooked into the, MLT, uh, the ML2 plugin. So there's this mechanism manager. And what we did, we just put our own driver there. What, the, what does it do? It does an action on create post port post commit. So once a um, Neutron port is created, we, in addition, add an, an, um, an entry to the network database. And the same is true for deletion. So when a Neutron port is deleted, we do the integration with the network database by deleting it there. And then the extensions done exactly the same way. So what's the subnet cluster? So again, the subnet cluster is taking your existing network in Neutron, which in, in our case, it's only one because we use provider networks, and breaking it into pieces. Not subnets, but uh, level in, in intermediate level. We call them clusters. In, in the meantime, Neutron has been working in routed networks, so this is very, very similar. And I put a link here to the, um, to the spec, and there's some code already. Um, I, I don't know exactly the state uh, of the implementation, but the notion is very, very similar. And this, this example probably makes this notion of a primary, secondary IP service a bit, a bit simpler. What we do is, so if you would do a Neutron netlist, you would see CERN network. If you do a Neutron cluster list, you see all the clusters we have. And these VM pools are literally pools of VMs that we can assign IPs to. And these are the clusters, so the primary IP services. All the hypervisors will have an IP that belongs to this cluster. And then for the assignment of the VM IPs, we have actual subnets. So these are Neutron subnets with an ID, which is these three dots. I, I removed it just for simplicity. With um, a subnet range, uh, you can add whatever. You can even have different sizes in, in there. And then uh, when, when you request an IP, what the Neutron will do is look at uh, hypervisor, see which, which uh, cluster it belongs to, and just assign the, an IP on one of the chosen subnets. Now, this, this give me the host and I will give you an IP or a subnet is uh, a part that is also missing. So we added another extension, which is the host restrictions. And this is an API call, again, to Neutron. So you can pass a host, and I give an example here, a uh, host name uh, of any hypervisor in the system, and it will give you the list of subnets you can use. In this case, they are similar, but the idea here is that you get one field with all the subnets you can use, and then 
you get additional fields that can be useful if we want to optimize the scheduling. So we can have like the least available subnet, the most available subnet to have things balanced. Uh, we also have a couple of monitoring tools that give us, uh, give us the usage of the subnets, um, which is also useful. Um, so in all this implementation of these two uh, extensions can probably be moved to routed networks when, once Neutron has them. And then even the pieces missing, which is this host restrictions, we could probably implement as an IPM driver in Neutron. Uh, we, we didn't investigate, so we, we invested some code in these extra extensions. We'll, we'll be looking at this next. Now the last bit is the instance metadata. So we had an issue with this, which is if we want to move to the Neutron metadata instead, uh, there's a dependency on L3 and DHCP. So in this case, uh, we couldn't use it. So the solution was just to rely on this magic IP Nova and just add a natural to forward to the Nova metadata host. And this works too. So it's a, a simple configuration of hypervisors and we can rely still on the Nova metadata server. Now, I'll final, finalize with the part, the last bit, which is uh, what we are uh, currently doing, which is migrating out of Nova network. Uh, so officially there's no way to do this, um, but there's people that have been doing this uh, before. Uh, eBay and Nectar are two examples. We took their examples as a basis. And uh, the code for Nectar is actually available. It's a set of Python, uh, good Python code to do this. And uh, what we've done is test a lot. Because our problem is that uh, uh, the accelerator is running right now. So if we would affect a large fraction of the infrastructure uh, while it's running, people are very, very unhappy. So it's, it's not trivial to, to do this kind of migration. So we have the ability to do this per cell, which limits the damage a lot, but still we wanted to do a uh, good test. So we, internally we have um, a mock production environment, which is not actually a, a deployment, but we mock our, all our infrastructure in a local Kubernetes environment. It's Kubernetes just because it's easy to orchestrate, but the main thing is that we run Docker containers to simulate all infrastructure in a laptop or in, the, in our CI builds or something like this. And it includes like puppet masters, a mock of the network database, a mock of our secret storage and things like this. And we can try different uh, setups for, for the migration. And we've been doing this for, for a while now and we built confidence in it. The procedure is as described here. So it's a series of steps. Uh, so for very quickly, per cell, uh, what we do is the old IP service that was in Nova Network, we add it to, to Neutron and to a cluster, a specific cluster in Neutron. Then we disable the Nova conductor, making it read-only. We reconfigure Nova in the controller of that cell to use Neutron. And then for each hypervisor, we just reconfigure Nova compute to use the fake driver. So this is kind of no-op driver, which is useful for this kind of situation. Then we just deploy the Linux bridge agent, which will do, um, the, the, will look at uh, what it should be configuring locally. And then for each VM in the hypervisor, we create uh, the Neutron port with exactly the same information. Then we attach the port to the VM. Again, this will, happen, this will result in no op in the hypervisor because we have the fake driver, so it's safe to do this. Uh, we bring the tap interface down, do the rename to match the Neutron uh, settings, and then update the libvirt. We use KVM, so we, we update the libvirt to match the new interface. And this is the procedure we've been trying. Uh, depending on the cell, some of the cells have very uh, uh, like consistent workloads, like the compute cells, batch cells, um, they are very similar, the VMs. In other cases, it's kind of different and uh, it evolved with history, so there's a lot of corner cases to, to try out. And this is uh, like iterative uh, work. Um, the goal is to have minimal impact in, in VMs, for now, the only impact we see with this procedure is that the Nova API for that, speci the Nova, um, for that specific cell is uh, not available for, uh, for during this procedure, which is not very bad because the VMs keep running. We just cannot schedule new ones there. 
And the, the, the impact on the VMs is very minimal. So all we see is a couple of seconds of uh, lost connectivity while we rename the DAP interface. And that's pretty much it. So the status of Neutron at CERN, right now it's the default. Um, all the new hardware we're getting, and we've been getting quite a, quite a lot, uh, is configured using Neutron for, for those cells. Uh, still coexisting with Nova Network, and it will probably stay like this for a couple more months while we migrate cell per cell. There's a couple of cells that have more critical services running there that we have to be careful. For Neutron, we are running uh, Mitaka. And for Nova, we are running Liberty, upgrading soon. This is uh, one thing, we don't upgrade all the services at the same time. We try to keep the, the, the separation between the two versions, between Neutron and Nova, not more than one, uh, just to be safe. Then we have thousands of nodes now deployed in Neutron cells. So this summer we had uh, a set of, I don't know, I think 1,800 new compute nodes coming and all of them went to Neutron, so we, we, st we saw the load starting to go high, but it's, been, it's behaving quite well until now, apart a couple of issues I'll mention. And then uh, we deployed Neutron LBAS. So this is the first new service we can have, thanks to Neutron. We are using the Octavia driver. We've been testing it internally and about to expose to the users, and we are looking forward to adding more like this. So a summary of the main issues we have. So the first one is that internally the DHCP at CERN has um, a glitch, which is when you create a new device in the network database, it gives, you, it gives it an IP which is not exactly its final IP. This is mostly for, to support Pixie boots. Um, this is a problem for us because then if the VM is happy with that IP, then it will never get connectivity. We looked at providing DH, an, a DHCP alternative using the Neutron DHCP agent. But uh, there were two issues with this agent. One is that it requires a port on the network, which is not very easy to do when you have uh, provider networks. The second one is that it runs uh, by default with the controller, but we have this broadcast domain isolation, so we would never get the DHCP packets getting there. We would have to deploy anyway DHCP agents, at least one instance per, per broadcast domain. So we ended up writing our own based on a, a library called Golang DHCP. The code is there. Uh, it works, but if we could replace it with the Neutron uh, DHCP agent, it would be good. I, I know there's some work going on upstream also to remove this requirement, and we might be able to do it. Again, uh, because of this uh, issue with um, the isolated uh, IP services and isolated broadcast domains, uh, we deploy actually one per hypervisor. It doesn't hurt to configure the IP rules to, to play nice and not just broadcast DHCP everywhere. Um, it seems to work. Then one of the main issues we've been having as we scale up the service um, is RabbitMQ instabilities. This is not specific to Neutron, but we've seen it more often than with other service. So if we run clustered with network partitions, we go into a split brain. Uh, there's ways to try to avoid it, but we still get um, some, some inconsistencies running with those modes. And then in known cluster mode, from time to time, we get uh, memory leaks and the uh, and, uh, Rabbit uh, server crashes. This happens mostly when we have a massive restart of the Neutron Linux bridge agent. For example, if we do a small reconfiguration in any Neutron file, the Puppet modules will, will trigger a restart of this agent. This is very easy to do, to fix by just disabling the restart, but then you have to manage the restarts manually when you need them. So we actually downgraded all the way down to 335 with RabbitMQ, and it still happens. Uh, so there was a very good session uh, earlier today about uh, RabbitMQ tuning and a lot of hints that we, we might try. Um, so the other issue is the agent being collocated with Nova Compute. This means that, at least in the hypervisor, we actually have to upgrade both at the same time. Uh, sometimes upgrading Nova is a bit more tricky because we use cells and it's V1, so there's a lot, to work, a lot of work to do for an, an upgrade. Uh, with Neutron, we could do it faster, but this means we would have to isolate it inside the hypervisor. So we'd, we might just move the Neutron agent to a Docker container and, and run it along the rest of the Nova services like this in the hypervisor. And looking much 
further uh, partitioning neutrons. So we don't have scaling issues right now, but we do see more load in things like RabbitMQ. So it worked well for cells to do some kind of partitioning, uh, maybe something with neutron, but it's not clear this will be needed. So I put it as a question mark. Um, the, to finalize, uh, this, the things we are doing right now is enabling security groups. So we didn't have security groups uh, when we had Nova Network, not because of Nova Network, but because of um, cells. So this was not supported in cells, so we couldn't provide it. Now, by migrating all the networking functionality to Neutron, it's a centralized endpoint and not uh, affected by cells. So we can actually enable security groups easily uh, with the new infrastructure. And then we, I mentioned that we are deploying Neutron LBAS. We don't have virtual IPs because we don't do overlay networks or anything fancy. Uh, so that means that we can provide uh, a, a, an easy way for people to deploy their LBAS instance with an HA proxy. But if we want HA, we, would have, we need two, and we don't have this virtual IP. So what we will do is try to integrate uh, the Neutron LBAS with the CERN DNS load balancing, which is there since uh, quite a while. This means that we can easily have two HA proxy instances and automatically register into a single DNS entry and do DNS round robin or something similar. So this would provide us uh, kind of similar HA functionality. Um, future work, so in theory we have we only have provider networks. There's a few groups at CERN asking to have more isolation and uh, asking for private networks. In theory, we can do this in Neutron right now. So this is what we'll be looking at uh, during next year. Uh, things like floating IPs would then be very useful because uh, the machines would have uh, uh, their private net, uh, subnets and uh, it would be nice to then expose them to the, ext uh, to the outside world and we would need floating IPs for that. Then move to routed networks, which is this new spec Neutron, which should provide everything we, we require, and then have some kind of software defined networking. Um, again, we have a big machine running, um, a lot of people involved in, uh, in operating the machine and analyzing the data and using all the resources we are providing for this. So kind of massive changes in some, something as critical as networking is uh, complicated, so this has to be introduced uh, uh, slowly. And hopefully there will be plenty of other work coming. And that's it. So um, if you have any questions or uh, comments, um, I'm happy to answer now, or you can catch me later. Thank you. <laughs> any questions? I think there's a microphone here. Sorry. Have you guys been following the resource provider stuff in Nova? You were talking about your, like, uh, your cluster mapping to the hypervisors. And that's sort of one of the use cases of generic resource providers. Yeah. Sorry. Give it a go. The question was it's not on. Try again. Now it's on. Uh, the question was how much they've been following generic resource providers. The um, one of the use cases is routed networks with Neutron. Right. But um, I was just wondering, because of your, the cluster mapping stuff that you right. guys have, that will sort of be tied in with how the placement service and resource providers works. And then um, eventually, if you were going to be moving to that, I mean, it's all, none of it's required right now in Nova, but it's, we're starting on it in uh, Newton. And then like the, the cells v1 limitations with security right. groups and floating IPs and all that, you're going to get the security groups going to Neutron, right. but um, like cells v2 again, yeah, not complete. But it, by the time you guys get all feature parity up, we'll have cells v2 and yeah, exactly. So, be awesome. <laughs> so so this bits in Neutron is is just that we this work started like more than a year ago. Uh, at the time, there was nothing yeah. like this uh, routed networks. So we did we did some code there and it works and uh, it's really good that. We, we can replace it eventually. It, it shouldn't be hard to, to migrate, actually. Yeah. And then the Nova resource provider, I guess it's something like the host restrictions we have where we can do the mapping based on routed right. networks. You map your allocation pools to your aggregates. Right. So that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, so now. Feedback, feedback will be very cool. Welcome on how 
Yeah, we can provide it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Any other question? Cool. Well, thank you then. Cool. Thank you. Good Cheers. Presentation.